Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Easter. Welcome to the first ever online CMDA Canada devotional. It's part of a seven week series leading up to our annual general meeting on May the 30th. We're hoping that you'll enjoy it and that you'll find it spiritually edifying. Our guest presenter today is Marta Thorpe. Marta is uh, one of our young rising stars. She's on our board of directors. She's a second year dental student at the University of Toronto. She's gonna to be giving our devotional. And we're also pleased to welcome Samantha Rossi, a second year medical student from the University of Toronto, who'll be providing us with uh, a song. Uh, the theme for Marta's uh, talk today is Luke 23, verse 52 to Luke 24, verse nine. That's Luke 23, verse 52 to Luke 24, verse 9, kind of at the end of the 23rd chapter of Luke and the beginning of the 24th. You may want to open your scriptures now so that you have it in front of you when she makes the references. In addition, uh, we'd like you to use the chat at the bottom of the screen. Uh, there you can make comments about what you hear or ask questions. And you can also put in your prayer requests. John Dykeman, our the uh, uh, head of our uh, ministry program is uh, going to be uh, conducting a bit of a response to what Marta has said, and also will take any prayer requests that you have uh, so that we can pray over those as a group. I hope you'll enjoy this uh, series. This is our first, as I said, of seven leading up to our annual general meeting on May the 30th. Uh, we're pleased to, to hear that Dr. David Stevens, the former CEO of CMDA US, is going to be leading uh, a presentation at that time. We'll have time for fellowship. It'll be our 50th birthday of CMDA Canada. So we're hoping you'll be able to participate in that as well. So God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And I hope you enjoy what you're going to hear. God bless. Um, so I thought that we could look a little bit at the scriptures uh, of what Marta wanted to share. But her passage was from uh, Luke 23, uh, verse 52, to uh, Luke 24, uh, going to uh, verse number 9. And so I'll just read this, and then I'm just going to speak about one little chunk, okay? So here we go. Um, this man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. So this is right after Jesus' death. Jesus has been put into the tomb. So Joseph of Arimathea, who we're talking about here. Then he took it down. He wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid it in a tomb and cut in stone where no one had ever been, yet been laid. Um, it was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The woman who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. And then, verse, and then chapter 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified on the third day and rise again. And they remembered these words and returning from the tomb, they had told all these things to the eleven and to the rest. So Marta had a really beautiful devotional prepared for us. And we even had a great song led by uh, Samantha Rossi. Um, and I just wanted to highlight one particular verse here. And that's verse number five. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the med said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? And what's important here is um, these people who are seeking Jesus were grieving. They were sad. 
their best friend, their Lord had died. He was no longer with them. And so they went to the tomb to grieve. And some of us, because of our circumstances that we find ourselves in, because of COVID, are also in this point of grief and sadness and disorientation, just like those disciples were, those people who were at the tomb. And the great news about the story is that God does not simply end the story at the tomb, but we hear this great message of how Jesus has risen. And I think similarly with COVID, God has not finished writing this story, whether it's your practice closing or whether it's, you know, the stress at the hospitals or whether you're a resident, you're ready to write your Royal College exam, or maybe you know, you're, uh, you're a student like the students I, I work with and everything has been shifted online and you're in this process of disorientation. And that's kind of like what these people at the tomb were feeling when they went to go see Jesus and he wasn't there. But the great news is, is that Jesus rose and we too will share in God's resurrection in Jesus. Paul says in Philippians 3 that we will share in the power of the resurrection, be it in the life to come or in, in this life, and, and, and seeing that things can be uh, overcome, even, even this great obstacle that we all find ourselves in of COVID. Hello, brothers and sisters, and happy Easter. Let's first open up with a word of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we come humbly before you, and we ask that you make your presence known. Anoint our thoughts, cast away any distractions, and I pray that what I might share may be a good seed, and one that bears fruits in our lives. Amen. In high school, and thinking of it probably well into my undergraduate career, one of my favorite verses in scripture that I would quote to my lovely mother was Luke chapter 12, verse 25, where Jesus says, Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Although I wasn't really using it in the way Jesus had probably originally intended, I knew it held deeper meaning, and it started to permeate into the way that I lived my life. And I think that people took notice. And if anything, they were confused. Because when I would write my tests, I would go through it once, and then I would close my test and seemingly stare blankly into space, often saying a prayer or two. But I knew that if I placed more trust in the stillness and that fresh new mind over madly going back into the test immediately, I would hopefully not risk making the same mistakes again. And yes, it's a super simple test-taking technique, but simple doesn't mean that it doesn't work. And I would argue that it works in our prayer lives too. Because communion with God should happen by seeking humble refuge in Him. And yes, the stain of original sin makes it arduous at times, but God also said that when we're burdened, His yoke is easy. So as I was praying a few days ago about what seed God could possibly want me to plant um, through this devotional. Finally, God placed on my heart Luke's account of Christ's passion. And I was struck how even after the most tortuous and painful part of the Paschal mystery, the crucifixion, we're called to rest until the resurrection of our Lord. So I invite you to follow along with me. I'll be using the New Revised Standard Version throughout this entire discussion, and we'll be looking at Luke chapter 23, verse 52, until chapter 24, verse 9. Now, I want to bring forward three main points to reflect on, and three action items or areas of the spiritual life where we can strive to seek God more. So my first point is to hope in God's goodness that he has a plan for your life. In the reading, chapter 23, verse 52 to 56, Luke describes how a follower went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus Christ. 
He took down the body of the slain lamb, wrapped him in a linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb, and that the women who had come from Galilee with him followed, and then they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. The key here is that you can see by their dutiful actions that you know that they trust in God and that they knew that that story was not going to end with a body in a tomb. Brothers and sisters, it is the good news, it is the best news that God's ways are not our ways. He has a will and a plan for your life, and I assure you that his plan is perfect and that it is 100 times better than anything you could ever imagine. And it's easy because he intended it for us. There are stories of God's chosen people that testify that God has thought creation through. And you can't forget that in the same breath, you are his creation and he delights in you and you are his beloved and he has great plans for you. So to prepare us to unite our will with his will, I encourage you to fast or fast in a new way that challenges you to enter deeper into your prayer life. Because when we fast from good things, we prepare ourselves to abstain or fast from the evil that separates us from that relationship with the Father. So now the second point is to hope in that he doesn't just have a plan, but he has a promise and God's promise will be fulfilled. We are allowed within reason to feel sorrow for disobeying God. And in fact, we should feel true contrition. And we, like Mary and the other followers of Christ, can console the heart of Jesus while he was on the cross. But I want to draw your attention to Luke chapter 23, verse 56. So after the preparations, it says, Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. Not only was it the Sabbath, but it was the time of Passover. And we need to learn or perhaps relearn that rest and stillness. Psalm chapter 46, verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. God who is master, father, creator, and love itself. We are the clay and he is the potter. Luke never said that they were wrestling with guilt or worry of what was to come. And I know that most of our natural inclinations as medical professionals is active action over adapting to someone else calling the shots, but sometimes we have to take a step back and trust that God knows what he is doing. So the action associated with trust is also a very simple one, and that's to know your Bible. Because I know that as soon as you start reading, you'll be reminded time and time again that God does not abandon. He does not forget his people. It will reignite the faith that he will redeem the repentant sinner. Because Christ canceled death and he paid the ransom for us. And now on to number three, which is rejoice in that hope fulfilled. After the Sabbath, after that time of rest, the women immediately returned at dawn. We're looking at Luke chapter 24, verse 2 to 5 now. And it says, They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. When they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. And then it continues to say in verses 8 and 9 that the women remember what Jesus said, his promise, his covenant, see it has been fulfilled, and his resurrection has come, and they rush in joy to tell the others. If I'm the only person to say this to you today, God will make you anew. Take courage and accept that gift. For a while now, the Latin phrase nuke chepi, which means now I begin, has really stuck with me. I write it on sticky notes and write it at the top of my to-do list on my whiteboard. And I do this because as Christians, we are well aware of the fact that the spirit is welling, but the flesh is weak. And it's crucial that when we fall to temptation or veer off course in our prayer lives, that we get back up quicker and quicker each time in peaceful repentance and not look back or be weakened by things that Jesus has already forgiven by his sacrifice. 
And this isn't just uh, something that you do after a New Year's retreat or something that you do once in a while. This is daily because it doesn't have to be an uphill battle to get back into communion with God. Because A, he is so creative that he can use those weaknesses. And B, his merciful love rushes to wherever you are in life. He is eager to transform you, to create you new. You just have to listen. Which brings me to the third action item, which is pray. Pray more, pray deeper, pray without distractions. See where you are and how you can improve, whether that's a better time or a better place or a better playlist. God wants that relationship with you wherever you are. Where were you in a place where you are no longer enslaved by sin, but you are a slave to Christ, his son? And ask yourself, do you recognize that? Do you, are you joyful in that? Do you worship in that? So there are my three seeds this Easter time. One, hope in God's goodness that he has a plan for your life. Two, hope that God's promise will be fulfilled. And three, rejoice in that hope fulfilled. Let us pray. Worthy are you, O Lord. Worthy are you, O Lord, of our praise. We thank you for the gift of your word, the word written and the word made flesh. Help us to leave behind our fears, our mistakes, worries, uncertainties, and have hope that your grace abounds and that by your grace we may walk in newness of life. Lord, teach us every day to be still and rejoice in your victory. We lift all of this up to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.
It's a tough act to follow. Um, that was a beautiful song led by our student Samantha here in Toronto. And I just want to reiterate that one line from the reading that Marta had shared with us and how she beautifully led uh, that devotional of hope. And, uh, and that's from verse five. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. And all of us can be consumed with what's not quite right with the world, with what's going on with, with COVID or, any, or anything else like that. Um, but I think what we need to be focusing on right now is Jesus and his majesty and his glory and how he's not finished write, writing the story of what we're experiencing right now with COVID-19. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up uh, since we went over time a little bit there today. Uh, so I want us all to take a deep breath and just know that it is God who gives us breath. And I want you to bring all of your thoughts and your feelings to Jesus. Uh, for those of you who are maybe grieving or those of you who are uh, just sad about the whole situation of this pandemic or feeling just disoriented and uh, uh, maybe a little bit hopeless. Just acknowledge those feelings before the Lord. And let's bring those feelings to Jesus, uh, knowing that he is the author of hope and the author of life. And he makes all things new. So Jesus, we thank you that you brought us together today. We thank you for the gift that Marta and Samantha are to us. We thank you more than anything else for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead. And that in a, in a time of uncertainty and disorientation, you are the one who will make all things right. And that we can share in the power of your resurrection. So lead us, God, lead us forward, help us to put our trust in you. And may your presence be our consolation as we uh, live our lives, be it at home or at work or with our um, responsibilities, whatever they may be. We pray that you might be glorified, Jesus. We pray it in your name. Amen. So thank you all for joining us this week. Uh, sorry once again for the technical difficulties. I'm glad that we finally got it working. Um, but uh, send your prayer requests in next week if you can, and we'll get to those. Uh, same uh, bat time, same bat place, and I hope that you can join us.
uh, next week. So God bless you.